Hey guys, so in this video I want to talk about two-dimensional equilibrium problems, which are problems where forces are going to cancel, but at least one force is going to be at an angle, not sitting flat on the X or on the Y, but at an angle. So when we cancel all the forces, we have to do this both in the X and the Y axis. Let me show you. So, um, the first thing we're going to have to do is decompose all the forces, because like I said, at least one of the forces will be at an angle. And then, because we're in equilibrium in both dimensions, I can say that the sum of all forces in the x equals 0 and the sum of all forces in the y equals 0. Okay? So, here I have, I'm going to call this T1, and I can call this T2. The other forces acting here, um, there's only one more actually, Mg. And just real quick, I'm going to use gravity as, a, as 10 instead of 9.8, just to round this to 50. Um, and this T2 here has to be decomposed into T2x and T2y. When I do this, um, I want the angle not to be up here, but the ang I want the angle to be down here. However, it turns out that this is exactly the same angle because this reflects over here. So 37 is the angle that I could use, okay, that I would use. So I said that the sum of all forces equals zero in the x-axis and the y-axis, but the way that I like to think of these problems that I think makes more sense, it's more visual, is to think that, uh, and these statements are equivalent, that all the forces to the left equal all the forces to the right. It's because all the forces pulling this way equal all the forces pulling this way, and we've done this uh, before. Same thing here, all the forces up equals all the forces down. Now notice that I have absolute value signs here, and the reason for that is that when I write it this way, I don't have to worry about signs. And I'll show you why um, really quickly. So I'm gonna start here with the sum of all forces in the x-axis equals zero. And there are only two forces in the x-axis, T1 and T2x. So you could do it this way, you could say, T1 is to the left, so I'm going to make it negative T1, plus T2x is to the right, so I'm going to make it positive T2x equals 0. And then I'm going to move T1 to the other side of the equation so that it becomes positive, and then I get T2x equals T1. T2x is a force on the right, and T1 is a force on the left. So left equals right, and they're both positive. But instead of going through all of this, I could have just looked at the uh, at the drawing here and said hey these two have to be the same because this is at equilibrium and I, I would have arrived at this um, much faster but notice that they're both positive because the magnitudes are the same all right so I can do this in the y-axis as well and then this would mean that this equals this all right sum of all forces in the y equals zero but I'm just going to skip some steps here and just say top equals bottom so you want to write this, you want to say left cancels with right, up cancels with down, and then we start trying to solve this. So if you go here, I don't have T1, um, I don't know T2x either, but I can expand T2x into T2 cosine of theta. Now you don't always want to do this. You only want to expand um, a component of a vector if you know at least one of these two variables. Right now, I know zero out of two variables. And if I expand, I know one out of three variables. And that's better, even though it might not seem better because I'm still missing two things. Um, I am in fact a little closer. So what you don't wanna do is expand this. If you don't know any of these three, then you would know zero out of three, which is certainly worse than zero out of two things, okay? So if you know one of the two, you want to expand it, and I know this. So I can write T1 equals T2 cosine of 37. Cosine of 37 is 0.8. So T1 equals um, 0.8 T2. I'm stuck here. I can't go anywhere else. So I'm going to have to continue over here, and hopefully the y-axis works out. Um, and I do know mg, I know mg is 50. And again, because I know one of the two variables that, that T2y, K2 
can be changed into t2 sine of theta I know theta then I'm going to replace I'm going to expand t2y all right so t2 sine of 37 equals 50 if I move things around t2 I find to be 83.3 that's the first answer and obviously to get the second answer I just have to plug this back in here so t1 is 0.8 times 83.3 which is 66.7 newtons and that is my second answer all right so you're going to say left equals right top equals down and try to solve for what you're looking let's check out the next one so here I have a one meter long string connected to the center of a two kilogram ball so the length of the string is this the mass of the ball is two kilograms put it over here um, and it is 30 centimeters in diameter so diameter equals 0.3 meters Remember in physics, um, we're always going to use radius. So let me convert that real quick. Which rests against a smooth, this means no friction, vertical wall as shown. So I want to know the tension of the string and the force of the wall on the ball. So let me draw a free body diagram here real quick. Um, let me draw these forces here real quick first. So I got a T here, TX here and got a ty here there's also an mg here okay so i drew a t it's at an angle um ideally i want this angle to be down here and i can split it up into tx and ty those are sort of the obvious forces and at this point you might wonder is there anything else well this ball is being pulled to the right by the tension because of the way that it's hanging t gets decomposed into tx and ty so you got a tx to the right which means the wall the ball is pushing against the wall therefore the wall has to push back against the wall right another way of thinking about this or visualizing that there has to be a force by the way this force is called normal is the fact that um, this ball is at equilibrium it sits there so there has to be a force canceling the force to the right otherwise you'd be moving to the right right f equals ma um, give us the idea that if there's only one force to the right then it has to accelerate to the right. If it's um, not accelerating, it's because there's either no forces or there are enough forces so that they cancel. So these two have to be the same. Once I draw this, um, I can draw, if you wanted to draw a free body diagram, it would look like this. Same thing, just a little simpler. And now I can say up equals down, left equals right. So T. Um, x equals n and ty equals mg now let's start over here um, remember I only want to expand tx into t cosine of theta if I know theta and I don't know theta right so that's kind of a bad idea if I do this look I I'm missing three variables all right and then here ty um, t sine of theta I do know mg um, the mass is 2 so I'm going to use gravity to be 10 just so I can round this nicely to 20 so t sine of theta equals 20 so this equation I have a little bit more information but I'm still missing two things okay I don't know tx and I don't know ty either so we're really stuck here and the only way to get out of here is going to be to find this theta here and to find theta I'm gonna use the fact that I know this length and I actually know this length over here as well if you use these numbers that were given to you 30 centimeter or more precisely actually the radius and you use the one meter length of the rope you notice that I have a little little triangle that gets formed right here right and if I draw a triangle this is one meter this is the radius right there right this is half of the diameter right there 
and I can then find this angle which is what we want okay I can do this using Sokatoa so notice that I have this is over this over here is the opposite angle I'm sorry the adjacent angle this is the hypotenuse so I have adjacent hypotenuse I should be using the cosine so I can say cosine of theta let me do this over here cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse adjacent is R hypotenuse is L but what I really want is theta so theta is the arc cosine of R which is 0.15 over L which is 1 so this is just the arc cosine of 0.15 and the arc cosine of 0.15 is 81.4 which makes sense because this heights much um, the, the hypotenuse is much bigger than R so this is a very steep angle like this alright so now that I know that I can just plug it in here and that's gonna sort of unlock things so T cosine of 81.4 equals N I'm still um, missing two here so I'm kinda stuck but notice that here T sine of 81.4 equals 20 you only have one unknown so I'm going to be able to find T here and plug it over here. So T equals 20 divided by the sine of 81.4. And if I do this very carefully, I get that this is 20.2 newtons. Once I know T, I can go back in here to find N. N is T cosine of 81.4 and if you do this you plug in these numbers in the calculator you get that n is 3.02 and by the way this is answer to part a which was asking for the tension of the string and part b asked for the force of the wall on the ball this is whoops this is normal right so I got both answers by doing that and that's how these questions are going to work up equals down left equals right no matter how many forces you have that's what happens if you have two-dimensional equilibrium um, and you just have to write the equivalencies the equations and then figure out a way to get the answers um, by playing with the two equations all right that's it